Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about how you can maintain the turbocharger in a car so it lasts as long as possible. Now this is a 13 year old Volvo with a 5 cylinder turbocharged engine. Turbo still works perfectly fine because it's been taken care of. It's got 197,895 miles on it. They use a turbocharger that takes exhaust gas to spin blades. Back in here there's a turbocharger. The exhaust gas spins the air and then the inside of the turbocharger rams air and it rams it through this big tube that goes down into the intercooler that's in the front of the engine. If you look in here you can see the intercooler fins. It looks just like a radiator only it's the cool air that the turbocharger rams in. Then on the other side the compressed air goes down and goes into the intake. Rammed into the engine to give it more power. Now at the heart of the system is the turbocharger itself and here's tricks to make it last as long as possible. First when you start a turbocharged engine cold do not race the engines up. Allow the engine to warm up for 5 to 10 seconds so that the oil in the engine starts flowing through the turbocharger. Realize that your engine oil on most turbocharged designs is also the oil that lubricates the turbocharger. So you want to start the engine up, let it run for 5 to 10 seconds before you ever rev the engine up because you don't want to rev up the turbocharger when it's not fully lubricated with oil. Very simple. And a corollary of this is do not rev the engine up and give it full power, full RPMs until the engine oil is warmed up. So you want to drive it around a few minutes before you rev it to full power. You know you start it up, you're going someplace, don't get in it and floor it and go as fast as you can. After say 4 or 5 minutes the engine's warmed up enough that the oil has got its consistency just right and then you can go full power. And the third thing is also oil related. Use high quality oil and change it a lot. Here's where full synthetic oil is best. Full synthetic oil works under hotter temperatures. Guess what your turbocharger does? The turbocharger uses hot exhaust gas to spin itself. It gets super hot. This is where synthetic oil is best. You got a turbocharged car, definitely use full synthetic oil. And change it a lot. Me, I change it every five to 7,000 miles. And realize that if you're driving at high speeds really fast with the turbo, some turbos will actually almost start to glow from the heat. They get so hot. So if you're driving it hard, make sure when you come to a stop and you're going to shut the engine off, wait about 30 seconds so that the oil can flow through it and some of them are also water cooled and so the coolant can flow through it to stop any built up heat from damaging the turbocharger. Now years ago before he shut them off let them idle for 30 seconds to a minute. The metallurgy is better than it was when I was a younger mechanic but still you're driving it hard before you shut it off wait 30 seconds or so with it idling so they can get rid of excessive heat that might have gone when you drove it hard. And speaking of cooling it down, you got a good turbocharged system that has an intercooler like this Volvo. Make sure the intercooler is working correctly. Take this Volvo. The intercooler's inside here. What's going to happen? If you drive out in the country at night all the time, bugs are going to get in there. Or if you're in the city, plastic bags could get in there. You want to make sure that it's clean, hose it down with water if there's bugs on it, and that there's no plastic bags or anything that are restricting flow to the intercooler. And always check the intercooler line. This is plastic, they can crack. Then when you go down to the bottom, it's rubber down there. And on the other side, that's plastic too, and there's rubber in the front. Check all the rubber and the clamps. Now, generally, if the plastic cracks or the rubber comes loose or just falls off or rots and has holes in it, it's not going to run right because that's where the turbocharged air is going and that's going to mess with the air fuel mixture if it's got air leaks on it. It's a good idea to check them every once in a while. Anyway, it's a simple thing you can do yourself. And since many modern turbochargers are also water cooled, make sure you have clean coolant. These turbochargers spin at thousands and thousands of RPMs. If they're water cooled, they got water seals and the oil lubricated and oil cooled ones have oil seals. If you have dirty coolant or dirty engine oil, dirt is friction. It will heat up the seals. Replacing it can cost thousands of dollars. It can also be a royal pain in the rear end because they're bolted onto the exhaust system. All that heat 
A lot of times that metal's practically welded on and rusted, and when you start taking it apart, pieces often break, then you gotta end up changing exhaust parts if they're rotten and crack when you take them apart. You wanna make that system last as long as you can without having to take it apart and replace it by keeping the coolant and the oil clean. And of course, if you do wanna get better gas mods with the turbocharged vehicle, you don't want to accelerate harshly all the time. Turbocharged engines get better gas mileage than a non-turbocharged engine. But this advantage is totally negated if you're always flooring it and the turbo is kicking in full force and the engine's accelerating as fast as it can, then you're gonna get much worse gas mileage. I have had little old ladies get phenomenal gas mileage with turbocharged cars, and I've seen young teenage guys get horrendous gas mileage as low as five miles a gallon in a turbocharged car because they were driving it like a lunatic. Realize with turbocharged cars, the power is there if you really need it when you floor it, but if you drive more conservatively, you get better gas mileage, and of course, the turbocharger itself will last longer than two if it's not strained as much. Now you know a bit more about turbochargers on your car and how you can make them last as long as possible without having to throw a whole bunch of money into it because they broke down prematurely. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.